All right, guys, here's my uh, completed um, capstone project. I am still kind of going to be 3D printing an enclosure for it, uh, so that isn't ready yet. But due to the amount of time I have left, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate um, the electronics portion of it doing what it's supposed to. I've got my uh, network of MOSFET uh, transistors there. I originally designed my circuit uh, using BJTs and did a current controlled uh, application um, with a uh, logic table which pulsed the uh, motor here. But I've since uh, switched over to MOSFETs and a fairly high powered uh, resistor, although it is much um, higher wattage than I needed. <laughs> it's that giant one you see back here. Uh, but it um, it was the correct value, and it was of that value, of that resistance value that I had on hand, it was the only one I had. Uh, so I went ahead and used that and uh, tied it all up. Now what you're seeing here is I've routed my uh, power for the motor and the uh, feedback wires uh, from the resistor through uh, CAT6E. Uh, I think that's CAT6E. Might be CAT5. I don't see it. CAT6. Okay, so yeah, it's a Cat 60, and uh, so it just happened to have the perfect uh, number of wires in there to provide the um, positive 18 volts to the center tap of the two windings inside of the motor here, and then all the rest of the wires come back seeking a ground, and they're allowed to pass through to uh, ground through these um, MOSFET transistors here, and then of course my feedback coming from uh, that same uh, CAT6E cable there is going in through uh, this 10K resistor and then uh, we're taking that feedback to the Arduino to ensure that it doesn't crash into the ends when it gets too far left or right and also when tuning from say a keyboard you can just type in the value your target position if you will on this thing and then it can use that feedback to smartly determine if it has arrived at the appropriate uh, position. So without uh, further ado, I'm um, just going to plug this thing up here. And uh, power the Arduino because I uh, got to plug that in through uh, USB here just to get power for it since it's uh, running the uh, logic table for the uh, Okay, there we go. And so I just want to show you that uh, when tuning this thing, I'm rotating my encoder knob and just through this CAT 6C here. Still got a little bit of programming to do to get this uh, display to work uh, like I want it to. To, uh, you know, give me the readout probably. Um, since this is going to be for an antenna, and this is for a tuning an antenna, I'm probably just going to have the uh, target frequency, the resonant frequency display on here. And um, it's fairly sensitive. I'll get them. I'll get this thing a little bit closer here. Um, excuse me, the mess thing a little bit closer here so you can see that when I tune it just uh, it doesn't take much and this is kind of like one click rotates the uh, rotates that thing about a quarter of a turn so that um, shaft there is getting rotated about a quarter of a turn with each turn of this so there you have it the uh, the uh, precision motor controller uh, with feedback and it was kind of convenient because I can actually always just increase the length of this if I want this to be closer to the keyboard or the computer where the antenna is being operated from I can have this all the way up wherever the antenna is and just increase the length of this um, there might be losses in the line with a longer line so I may have to uh, you know step up the uh, voltage or uh, power of the uh, of the um, uh, power supply there just to account for a really long run to drive that motor from just check it and make sure it's not getting too hot this is a 24 volt stepper although I'm only uh, driving it with about 18 volts and um, there's the uh, soldered up and completed circuit there fairly simple um, 
but getting all of the uh, code to play nicely and do something with that feedback was uh, proved to be pretty interesting and actually fun at the same time. And getting the uh, rotary encoder to work actually required the use of interrupts for the microcontroller to get it, you know, really as responsive as you see it is here. So just barely touch that, like just barely touch that and it starts moving. And I worked with uh, half steps in the uh, logic table to get that motor nice and quiet but still have lots of torque. Alright, so there you have it. Thanks for uh, checking out my video.